All right, folks. So this may be the most important video I've ever done, ever, and I've done over a thousand videos. We're coming into the time of the end, and just like in the Bible, um, God has servants like Daniel, and Daniel was given the ability to tell Nebuchadnezzar what his dream was and to interpret that dream. And God will pick people during the course of history and he will give them his spirit and then his spirit will manifest through them and they will have abilities that other people don't have. Um, it's kind of difficult just to be sitting in front of a computer right now talking to everybody. Saying, well, I'm that guy. And uh, I didn't ask for this job. Um, the Lord had me predestined to do it. But I'm going to deliver to you more supernatural information than probably anyone's ever seen at one time. The information you're about to see, it is not research. It is the gift of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, to each one is given a manifestation of the Spirit. Um, this is the gift of knowledge and the gift of wisdom. It, you're going to see knowledge that is so far beyond human capability that you're probably going to, you, you may just burst into uncontrollable tears. You may burst into uncontrollable laughter. Uh, you may have an anxiety attack or two or three. You may have to sit around like other people have who have received this and just grind your way through the reality of it because the truth is a burden. That's why Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me. So let's just get into it very quickly. And, and I'm going to start with some definitions. You cannot move forward in any understanding if there's definitions that you don't know. Every time a word is used, if you don't know the exact definition of that word, every time that word is used during the discourse and you haven't learned the exact definition of that word, then you don't have a complete understanding. So let's do some very basic things that the Bible says. This is part one of the presentation. I'm going to use the Bible right now to show you your identity, who we all are, what the big mystery was. Satan doesn't want anyone to know. He doesn't want anyone to figure this out. I'm an end time harbinger again. Anyone that's seen my testimony, you just know how absolutely insane, beyond belief it is. It's it's even hard for me to deal with. So anyway, let's just do it. Let's just do this. Okay, let's get to it. First Peter 1.17. So if you call on the Father who judges each one's work, judges according to every man's work right here, look. Past the time of your, look at this bold print, your exile here in fear. So 1 Peter 1.17, you're, you're to conduct yourself in reverence during your time living as strangers, uh, past the time of your exile here in fear. Okay, that's 1 Peter 1.17 right here. Let's look at 1 Peter 2.11. Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and exiles. Read it for yourself. I, I urge you as aliens and exiles to keep on abstaining from the lusts of the flesh. And the lusts of the flesh are, are all those desires which issue out of a corrupt nature, which is our human host body. That's where the, all the corrupt nature comes from. This presentation, you're going to see, I again, what the where the host body came from, how it was made, why you're in it, what your position is, what your relationship is to God, and how to get restored to God. Most importantly, how to be restored back to God. And it's no, this is not religion. This is the truth. I'm going to say this before I continue. There is only one way back to the Father. That's through the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. And he is my Lord and Savior, and he's my master. And I serve him and him only, just for the record. So let's go. So again, First Peter 1.17. 
live your time here, the time of your exile here in fear. 1 Peter 2.11, I urge you as aliens and exiles to keep on abstaining from the lust of the flesh. Okay, so obviously just from those two scriptures alone, you know that you're exiles and you're aliens. Exiles from where? Where are you in exile from? Think about it. Jesus is going to tell you here in just a minute, in the scriptures, where you're in exile from. And I'm going to show you scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture to show you who you are. Your identity is the number one thing Satan wanted to keep from you. And the Bible says your identity is hidden in Christ. Watch this. Live out the time of your exile. I urge you as exiles and aliens to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Okay? Now, let's go to the definition of exile. The word exile right there. The state of being barred from one's native country, typically for political or punitive reasons. Punitive means being punished. P-U-N-I is the root of punished. Punitive. So the exile means the state of being barred from one's own native country, typically for punitive reasons, uh, political or punitive reasons. It means banishment. Expulsion. Expulsion means to be cast out and deportation. Okay. Uh, if you use it as a verb, it, it means to expel and bar someone from their native country, typically for political or punitive reasons. It means to expel, to banish, expatriate, deport, outlaw. Okay. That's what the word exile means. Let's go back here. Live out the time of your exile here in fear. Definition of exile. The time of your banishment. The time of your expulsion. The time of your deportation. Live out the time of your deportation in fear. Live out the time of your expulsion in fear. Live out the time of your banishment. In fear of the Lord. First Peter 2. I urge you as aliens and exiles. To abstain from the lusts of the flesh. And those desires which are issue out of a corrupt nature. Okay so. Let's look at the word alien. Belonging to a foreign country or nation. A foreigner. Especially one who is not naturalized citizen of the country where they are living, a foreigner, an immigrant. It means belonging to a foreign country or nation. Let me just give you some biblical reference points. The kingdom of heaven versus the earth. So you were exiled from where? Where have you been exiled from? I'll tell you where. Jesus, Jesus tells you exactly where. We're going to go to Psalm 82 first. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. I have said, you are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men, and you shall fall like one of the princes. There's your exile. That's Psalm 82. But this is Psalm 82. Let me show you what Jesus said in John 10. John 10. They were going to stone Jesus. The Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus said, many good works have I shown you from my father. For which of these works do you stone me? The Jews said, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, which means to speak evil. 
because that thou being a man makest thyself God. By the way, Jesus Christ was and is the Lord God come in the flesh from heaven into this system. I'm When I refer to the earth, I'm going to call it a system and the earth. Okay, it's a system of control and everyone's in a host body and you are banished into a host body. Your host body is your prison suit. And I'll prove it during this entire discourse. Look what Jesus said. So the Jews said, because that you being a man, eh, you got it wrong. Make yourself, thyself God. It's the opposite. Jesus said, is it not written in your law? I said, you are God's. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scriptures cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. So Jesus just quoted Psalm 82. He said, Jesus said, Is it not written in your own law, your law? I said, Ye are gods. Psalm 82. Ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men, you shall fall like one of the princes. Now we're going to open up what's called Esword. Now I want to show you what Esword is so you understand what it is. Okay, now let me show you something. This is my King James Bible. In this Bible, you know, I don't know, you know, how people treat their Bibles, but when I go through my Bible, I will mark it up and I will underline stuff. So you have your King James Bible and every word that's in your King James Bible is in this big book called the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. Every single word, every time it's used in the Bible is here. So if you want to look up one particular word, let's see what I have highlighted. Uh, sorry, I gotta get my glasses on. Okay, so in this one, I'm looking at the word temple. So everywhere I wanted to know what the word temple meant, I highlighted. So I went through this book and I looked up all the places in all the scriptures so I could find out what the exact meaning in Hebrew was where that word was used in the Bible, and was it a different meaning, or was the meaning the same all the way through? And that's what this program that I'm going to show you does. So, for example, Daniel 2.43, Whereas thou sawest the iron mixed with the miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. So, if you want to know what mingle themselves is in Hebrew, because there's a little number right here. It's 86151. I'll highlight just the number. See? Mingle themselves in Hebrew translates to, let's click on it. It means to co-mingle. Look at what the word means. Arab. Arab. That's the word. Arab. Don't you think it's odd that there's a standoff between, you know, the Arabs, the Arab nations and Christianity now? where Islam is predominant, and they have the Mahdi that they want to bring about the Islamic Jihad, the holy war, to, to usher in their era of prosperity. And the word is Arab, co-mingle, mingle oneself together. Look, to co-mingle, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Posterity, that means like children. The seed of men. And you can walk it back and look up sowing time, posterity, carnally, child. So they will mingle themselves with the seed of men. So now we know exactly what that word means in English, and we've translated it now to Hebrew. I speak, so I've, I've spoke several different languages during my life. I was raised speaking English and German. Uh, we moved to Italy. I spoke Italian. I uh, moved to the United States. I speak Spanish and English now. Those are my two primary languages. When you have other languages, there are words that just do not translate 
to English. And a lot of people that just speak English are a huge deficit because you don't understand the dynamics of languages. But when you translate other languages, there's words that don't even come close to what it, the English version is of that word. And so if you really want to know what's going on, you go look at the language it was originally spoken in. And we're going to do some of that during this video. But I want to, I want to make sure you know what we're using as our resource because we are using a combination of the Bible and this giant monster resource called the Strong's Concordance, which has every single word in the Bible, everywhere it's used, every single time it's used, and the Hebrew and Greek equivalent of the word. It is an exhaustive resource. And I have a program that all I have to do is click on that word, and it tells me exactly what it means. Here's the word in Hebrew. It's Arab. Arab. It means to co-mingle, to mingle self. Okay, and this is going to be very important because this is going to expound on so many things that you've been lied to about. And the enemy is really good at lies. So let's start with right here in a very important scripture that Jesus quoted this scripture. He quoted Psalm 82 right here. And so he just, look, I'll just highlight it the same color. Ye are gods. I'll do it pink right there. So there it is. So Jesus said to them, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods right there. I have said, ye are gods. So no matter what, I love you in Christ. I'm not here to debate. I'm delivering end of the world, supernatural revelation for everyone to be able to see and understand and get out of the shackles. Your body, your host body is your prison suit. Your exiles, you got banished, you got kicked out. That's what you're doing here. Now does the world make a little more sense? People like, well, how could a loving God let some child be born in Africa where, you know, he's in abject poverty? Well, now it makes a little more sense if we're a bunch of exiles that were part of an insurrection in heaven and we all got cast down into host bodies and you reap what you sow. So here we are reaping what we sowed. That makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? And that's exactly what the Bible says, except you've been lied to. And my ministry was and is and has continued to be from the night I got saved. The Lord told me 100% truth no matter what, and I will give it to you. And I have to speak 100% truth even if it means my life. It doesn't matter. And that's what y'all need to do. Okay, so one more time, let's go through it very quickly. First Peter 2, first, first Peter 1 Peter 1.17, pass the time of your exile here in fear, in fear of the Father. Let me put that screen down just a little. There we go. So pass the time of your exile, definition of exile. Pass the time of your banishment, your expulsion, your deportation. By the way, the word expulsion means to cast out. 1 Peter 2.11 Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and exiles. As aliens and exiles. To keep on abstaining from the lusts of the flesh and those desires which issue out of corrupt nature. Because your, your host body is your enemy. I urge you as aliens and exiles, aliens, someone who has been banished or expelled or deported from their native country, which is heaven, alien, belonging to a foreign country or a nation. Now, what's really interesting is that here we are on in a system called the earth where we're actually foreigners to the system itself. And we got caught in a snare of the devil, which is exactly what the Bible says. First Timothy two at the you know what? I'll just show it to you. First Timothy two. And we're gonna do scriptures for just a few minutes before we get into all the supernatural data. You need to have a basis for what we're doing. Okay, so first Timothy chapter two. A snare is a Let's see. 
I'm sorry, 2 Timothy 2. A snare is a, a trap that turns its victim upside down, by the way. We're going to go through that too. Here we go. In meekness, instructing those that, look, oppose themselves because there's a good you and there's a bad you. There's a right side up you and there's an upside down you. There's a double you. There's a good and evil you because you are the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's why you oppose yourself. It says, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure, look, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Let's go look at Revelation now. And that great dragon was cast out exiled, cast out, expulsion, deportation, exiles. You are exiles. Revelation 12, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Live out your life as aliens and exiles. So if you were in heaven and you got cast out to the earth, what would you be? An alien and an exile. Because if you got cast out of a place that you belonged into a system called the earth, into a host body where you are fighting for control, but you have an evil force that is destroying you and you're your own worst enemy, now everything makes perfect sense, doesn't it? And I'm going to show you so much data now that, I mean, I just use the Bible right now to show you who you are. You're exiles. You are the exiles. We're the exiles. Let me show you how that plays out in Jeremiah. And then we're going to, I'll show it to you in Jeremiah and Esword. This, is, this resource is called Esword. I'm going to go to Jeremiah 29. Okay, so we were lied to in heaven. Satan is the father of lies. And he deceived a bunch of God's angels. Lucifer did. And we were promised something, and we believed it. We quit trusting God. Satan said, oh, no, you can have host bodies, families. You can have all these things, and surely you won't die. No, that's the lie. You will surely die, and he will benefit from your death because... When you die, he gets your energy. He gets your soul. Because if you don't get converted before you die, and the reason I do this when I say converted, because the Bible says if your eye be single, your whole body's full of light. But if you got one right side, one good eye, and one evil eye, your eye's not single, is it? You're, you're half one thing, you're half something else. One right side up, one opposing, in opposition to yourself. So when you get converted, your eyes become single. Your whole body's full of light. And I'm going to show you how to do that. It's real simple. Just start turning everything upside down. And I'm going to show you during this presentation. So there you go. So let's see. Now these are the words of the letter Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders, which were carried away captives. Now just think of Satan carrying a bunch of people away captive into the earth okay so now remember i showed you in daniel 2 43 what's the word they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men what does it mean uh, the word means uh to co-mingle mingle self and the word is arab that's from daniel 2 43 but it stayed right here now we're in jeremiah 29 1 watch and so this is the letter from jeremiah sent from jerusalem by the way jerusalem means Jerusalem means the city of peace unto the residue of the elders which were look carried away captives let's click on that Hebrew word oh my god it means exile so they were carried away exiles but even more importantly let's look at what the root of the word exile means freak out it means to denude do you know what denude means it means to strip naked especially in a disgraceful sense by implication to exile. See, you were exiled because of our 
our misbehavior in heaven, and this is our chance to get back home. That's why those that deny Christ to the pit, because your chance to get back home is your host body. And the only way to do that is to admit you were wrong. And God wants you to come home. He died on a cross to get you back. He knows you were deceived. He knows you got carried away, exiles to the earth. He's the one that had to send you here. So he's like, I'd like to get him back. So he took on a host body. He, here's the earth. God came from heaven. He took on a host body. And he came into the same system through a virgin. He overshadowed her. So his spirit was born into this system. He lived a sinless life in the flesh so he could satisfy his own judgment. See, he's the judge, and the only way he can commute your sentence is to satisfy his judgment against you. And the only way to satisfy that was to give you a proxy, which was he himself said, I'm going to take Jonathan's sins for him. But the only way you can do it is to say, I deserve my punishment. You would be just in condemning me. I deserve to go to hell. Forgive me, I'm so sorry. And then you repent. By the way, the word repent means 180 degree, turn the opposite direction. Repent literally means a 180 degree turn the opposite direction. I'm going to show you that in a little while. We're going to go, again, we're going to go through so much data, your head is going to spin. You're going to cry. You're going to laugh. You're probably going to have an anxiety attack. You're probably going to have to pause these videos and sit there and ball your head off because dad left heaven to come get you because of your misbehavior and mine. We're all guilty. Now it makes sense why some people are born in foreign countries into situations that just seem deplorable because they're exiles and you don't know the part they played in heaven, but God does. So see, a lot of people like to judge God. Oh, how could be a loving God? And there's people over in Africa. Well, because they got kicked out too. That's why. And he can do whatever he wants with all those that committed insurrection in heaven did you know barabbas was crucified in between two thieves what are thieves people that take what doesn't belong to them yeah okay well maybe they took something that didn't belong to them like uh, a bunch of god's angels man well it's like a child custody suit just think about it so he brought a bunch of angels and everybody joined forces wanted their host bodies and you know, he said all right you know that's that's the forbidden fruit. No one's allowed to do that. Because you know what it's attached to? What looks like a host body system is nothing more than a transmutation device. To transmute the essence of God, you get it trapped in a system called a host body. And then that host body is inherently evil. And it transmutes the purity of God into something different. And if you don't get reconciled to God before you die... You go to the pit and you become food for the angel of the bottomless pit. A lot of people are like, where does it say that? Satan prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Where do you go when you die? To the pit. Who's in the pit? The angel of the bottomless pit. What's in the pit? Uh, a race of locusts that have tails like scorpions that are going to come out and sting men. And men will seek death and will not find it. It's going to be a supernatural alien invasion from the inside. And I'm just going to prove it all out now. Okay, so again, Jeremiah the prophet, a letter sent to the residue of the elders which were carried away captives. Let's look at that again. It means exile, but look at the root of the word. It means to denude, just like the Garden of Eden. They were made naked, just like the Garden of Eden. To denude, especially in a disgraceful sense. Because... And it means to exile captives being usually stripped. Back in those days, when they would get a bunch of, when they would conquer someone, you know, conquer a group of people and take them 
back to their land, which is what happened to us. We were in heaven. We got conquered and brought here, given host bodies, and we were stripped, which is what they used to do to the prisoners, like in the time of Nebuchadnezzar. They would march them through the streets naked in a disgraceful way. Everything making sense now? Okay, so they were carried away captives and to the priests and to the prophets and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive. Uh, carried away captive. Look, I'm going to click on that word right there. Okay, carried away captives right here. Look what it means. It means exile, but the root of the word is Hebrew word 1540. Now watch. To the elders which were carried away captives, 1473, and to the priests and to the prophets and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive. Again, the same words, carried away captive. But look, it's the root of the word right there. Oh my gosh. I'm going to highlight that. Let's click on it. There it is, to denude, especially in a disgraceful sense, to exile captives usually being stripped live out your time uh, the time of your exile in fear of the lord i urge you as aliens and exiles to keep on abstaining from the lusts of the flesh they were carried away captive they were carried away captives exiles carried away captive to strip naked from the city of peace like heaven because we're all trying I'm I'm hoping to be part of the new Jerusalem which is the new city of peace revelation 3 they were carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon let's look at Babylon now everybody pay attention so we were carried away captive from the city of peace heaven Jesus is our peace who has made both one. He's broken down the middle wall of partition to make in himself of the two one new man, Ephesians 2. So we're carried away captive from the city of peace to, let's see what the word Babylon is. Okay, Babylon, it means confusion, which is where we're at. But look at the root of the word and freak out. To overflow, to mix, to mingle self the same. It's a different word. This is Balal. It's not Arab. It's Balal, but it means the exact same thing. To mix, to mingle, to mix self. There it is. So we were carried away from Jerusalem to ba Babylon, which means confusion, and it means to mix, to mingle self. And Daniel 2.43, the last kingdom, they shall mingle themselves together with the seed of men. So now we've used the Bible and proved exactly who we are. It's not arguable. Jesus even said, and I'm going to reiterate this before I start showing you all the supernatural pictures. Somebody tell me what Jesus said. Say it out loud wherever you're sitting. What did Jesus tell everybody in John 10? Okay, now we're going to break this down into Hebrew real quick. Okay, let me show you John 10 real quick. The Jews were going to stone Jesus. Jesus said, for what good works do you stone me? The Jews said, not for good works, but for blasphemy, because you being a man, make yourself God. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your own law? I added the word own right there. But is it not written in your law? I said, you are gods. And then Jesus said, if he called them gods, he's talking about in Psalm 20, 82, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, Look what he says now. And the scripture cannot be broken. So no matter what anybody on the planet says, Jesus just told you through the scriptures, you are gods. You're exiles. Get it? Everyone's in exile. That's why he wants you back. That's why you're all the prodigal sons. You took a trip to a, a faraway land, which is the earth, the system. You took a trip to a faraway land. And you spent your inheritance, which is your eternal life, on riotous living and prostitutes. Riotous living and prostitutes. 
until you came to your senses and you said, I'll go back down. I'll go, I'll go back to my father and I'll ask him to forgive me. Even though I'm not worthy to be called a son, maybe he'll let me be a hireling. But when he saw his son coming, he ran to him and embraced him, put a ring on his finger. He said, my son that was lost is found. He was dead and he's alive again. Do you understand? We are those exiles. We went to a faraway land called the earth. We were led away captive by Lucifer and those that were in charge with him. We got sucked in and we ended up in host bodies. Now watch. So Jesus said, is it not written in your law? I said, you are gods. And if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scriptures cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world that I blaspheme is because I said, I am the son of God. Let me paraphrase that for you. Jesus is saying, hey, guys, I just said I'm the son of God. Y'all are gods. Your own scriptures say it. So what's the big deal? You guys want to stone me over that? That's insane. The Jews were going to stone him. He said, hey, what are you going to stone me for? For blasphemy. For you being a man, make yourself equal to God. And he says, no, no, wait a minute. Your own scriptures say you're gods. So maybe y'all need to back off. Y'all are gods. I'm just the son of God. That's what he's saying. He said, your own scriptures say you're gods. Here it is. Psalm 82. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said right there, ye are gods. Ye are gods. Look at the word for gods. Elohim. Hebrew word 430. It means gods. A very important little preposition right there, the word of. It's highlighted in yellow for you. It means of the supreme God. It does not mean Anything but of the Supreme God. It is not the Supreme God. You are God. Y'all are of the Supreme God. Another word is magistrates, because gods are magistrates. And gods are angels, right there. And gods are judges. They're all those things. A god is a magistrate. A God is an angel. A God is a judge. So he says, I have said, all you are gods, and all of you, the whole, hence, any and all, and every, all of you are children, a son, a builder of the family name in the widest sense. You're children of, look, you're all, you're gods, you're all children of the most high God. See, El Yon, see right there? It means the supreme most high God. You're all children of the most high, Elion, the supreme most high God. I'm going to change the color right there. You're all children of the most high. Pay attention to this word right here. But. But you shall die like men. There's your exile right there. But you shall die like men. And the word is Hebrew word 120, Adam, a human being, hypocrite. You shall die like men and fall. To fall, to be cast down, and to be cast out. So you shall be cast out like one of the princes. Oh, wow. Master prince that had rule in heaven, you know, like a magistrate, a judge, magistrate, a judge. So, see, we're all judges, we're all magistrates, we're all angels. You got kicked out and you got a host body. And your only chance to get reconciled to God. Now, remember, the Bible says, we're ministers of reconciliation. You cannot be reconciled to anyone 
unless you were very close to him before. So we were obviously very close to the Father, but now we got separated because we got cast out because we're exiles, but now we got to be reconciled back to Dad, and the only way to do it is for Dad to come get us and take on flesh and live out our penalty and die on a cross for his own children. Wow. So now I've given you the scriptures. With the next part of this video that's coming, I'm going to leave this, I'm going to call this part one, essential scriptures. Part two, which is going up later today or tonight. Part two, you're going to see so much supernatural stuff your head's going to spin. Every bit of what I show you is going to validate what you're looking at right now I was tempted to do this in one shot or I just do it all at once give you a three or four hour video but I am under such severe cyber attacks with all my computers browsers changing on me in the in the middle of working my browser will change it'll knock out my JavaScript it'll knock out my Adobe flash and these the powers that be are trying to stop me from getting this to you. And I will not be thwarted. One way or another. I'm going to make sure you guys get it. Now I've given you the scriptures. To show you who you are. You're gods. But. You're going to die like men. Oh, and you're going to fall. You're going to be cast out. Like one of the princes. Exiled. I didn't say it. Jesus said it. Jesus said it. You are gods gods you're all children of the most high but you're gonna die like men now you're gonna fall like one of the princes and now it's all gonna be proven out i've already done many videos that prove this all out the information's out there but now i'm gonna put it together in a way that is just, just, just pragmatic syncopated we're gonna go one folder at a time and i'm gonna do each folder i'm gonna name this Maybe end time revelation, the scripture part, part one. Okay, let me, uh, I'm wondering if I should show you Genesis 1 right now or wait. I'm going to wait till I deliver the imagery. The imagery that's going to go with Genesis 1 is going to blow your mind. Everything has come full circle. Barack Obama is the Antichrist. Uh, we have an insurrection in our own government, which is, a microcosm of what happened in heaven. We got a guy named Barack Obama, lightning from heaven. Luke 10, 10 18 says, Jesus said, I'd be held to Satan fall as lightning Barack. You know what? This would be kind of fun. As lightning fall, I'd be held Satan fall as lightning Barack from the heavens, Obama. I'll show you where I looked this up a long time ago. Let's see. Lightning. Barack. See it? And then down here at the bottom. Let's see. Let me see. See, back when I, there it means Barack, lightning in Hebrew. So the Bible says, I beheld Satan falling as. Barak, and from the heavens, Obama. Bama means a lofty place. It's the same exact word as Isaiah 14, where we see Lucifer says, I will arise above the throne of the Most High. And um, I've got so much scripture for you guys and so much proof, it's going to blow your mind. And for those of y'all that have been watching this channel, you guys know, you know what gets delivered here. I just wanted you to get the scriptures to start. And I don't want to do four hours of recording, going back and forth to images, and then find out I had a cyber attack and four hours in the dumpster. I've been fighting this thing for two days now, trying to get this to work. All my computers switch browsers on me. I'm trying to set up a firewall and get stuff to where the powers that be can't just jack with everything I do now, which is what they're trying to do. All right, guys. This is part one. You are exiles from heaven.
to a host body. And now I'm going to prove it out with, with a supernatural gift, imagery beyond your just ability to perceive it almost. It's going to blow your mind. Okay, part two is coming up.